Okay, here's 2.1 notes for you. This section is called Bar, Circle, and Time Series Graph. I'm going to try to make this short and sweet just because I'm nice to you today. So, first of all, the three things we're basically going to look at. Um, what do we do these for is graphical displays. They do this just to represent data um, many different ways. Um, try to make the viewer think about the substance of the graphic. Kind of, kind of give them an idea of what the data is telling you. And then also you need to try and avoid distorting the message of the data. Because sometimes with these graphical things you can make it too pretty or too neat to distort the um, information or the statistics behind um, anything. So first of all, the bar graph um, can be used for qualitative or quantitative data. Um, vertical or horizontal form. Make sure you have the bars uniformly spaced and equal widths apart. They're not touching. There's going to be equal widths. Um, the length or height of the bars is the count or the percentage of the variable, depending upon what you're kind of looking at. Um, same scale must be used for the length of each bar, but you can use a squiggle. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that before, but if you think about a bar graph, sometimes people will put a little squiggle in there. That's a horrible squiggle. And they move up. Okay, and what that can do is instead of saying this is zero, you may start your counting at um, 90 or something. So that's the idea. You can make it go, and that squiggle is horrible. Okay, so you go, let us a little lightning bolt type squiggle to make you jump numbers. Okay, and that can make you, uh, you know, zoom in a little bit more and make it a little bit easier to read. So that happens. Also, in everything you do in any of this chapter, you have to include titles, labels, and units for every bar or length. So when you have, basically when you look at a graph, you want to be able to tell what it is, what it means, and in a very easy way. That's the idea. They're graphically um, helpful for people. So here's an example of a bar graph. Just note that there's equal space between them. You have your increments. You can have your names or whatever is happening on the bottom and you need to have a title all right a Pareto chart okay this is a bar graph but what's different about it, it has two specific features behind it okay the heights of the bars represents frequencies nothing too different about that but the bars are vertical and they are ordered from tallest to shortest so if you look over here at this bar make sure it is tallest to shortest in that order um, it's definitely quality control. You can try emphasize, hey, wh whatever reasons for returns, okay, this is the reason why, okay. And then used to investigate causes of problems. That's what it's kind of used for. You want to basically emphasize the big problem, okay. This particular problem, that that is the big problem. Circle graphs or pie charts. You've seen these before. It's used for qualitative data only. I'm trying to get these out of the way, okay. Wedges of the circle represents proportions, i.e. percentages of the data that share common characteristics. Okay, basically show the division of the whole into into the parts. Label parts with the appropriate percentage. That's important. Don't just assume that people can guess. You want to give a percentage on there. And once again, you're going to notice a um, pattern. Give me a title and a legend. That's helpful because not you, sometimes it's not always able to kind of label the you know that this is Democrat. You don't necessarily want to cover that up, okay? It's easier just to use a legend and then just have the percentages sitting on the circle, okay? You want to have people just, okay, this blue chunk is what's important, 55%. Oh, that's the Republican. That's the preference maybe for the state of North Dakota, okay? So that's an example of a circle graph. Time series data, i.e. a line graph. You've all seen this before, okay? Measurement of the same variable, that's what's important. You have to have the same variable over a regular period of time. Okay, so Pedro takes his blood pressure each day when he wakes up. He can put that into a time series or line graph, put the days on the bottom, whatever his blood pressure is going up. Okay, used for time series data, shows values in chronological order. Make sure you go in chronological order. Time is always on the horizontal axis, variable is on the vertical, plot each point. Connect the dots with line segments, and then, i.e., again, include a title and labels. I want to be able to look at it and know exactly what's going on. Okay, here's an example of a time series graph. So this is the sales in thousands of dollars. Notice in January, February, March, April, and then you connect your dots. Okay, so that's pretty easy to do. Nothing totally new. I'm gonna guess. Okay, and these are just a summary. 
if you want to have it in a nice little order, you can you know look at these. I'm not going to go through them and waste any more of your time. So bar graphs, Pareto charts, circle charts, or circle pie graphs, time series graphs, and once again, the important part for any graph, provide a title, label everything, identify the measure, and do not let the artwork um, skew or hinder. There's a point where you're too artistic. You're taking away from the actual data as well. And we're going to kind of talk about this as we get into our project. So this is the assignment we're going to do tomorrow in class. You guys have a wonderful night.